12. The news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police looking for the man who turned a couple's morning exercise routine into a painful experience. Police say they were both shot by that gunman at Southside Lions Park around 6 o'clock in the morning. As Katrina Weber reports, they believe it happened during a robbery. Yeah. Within minutes of getting the call, San Antonio police had swarmed into Southside Lions Park. And despite all the evidence they collected, they realized this investigation would be no walk in the park. A man and woman out for their usual morning stroll have been shot during an apparent robbery by someone who got away clean. It's kind of scary. Now I kind of have to find a new place to run. Adrian Hernandez was surprised to stumble upon the scene as he jogged along his regular route. It's peaceful. It's no one's up in the morning or some people, but it's normally just peaceful. The robber, it seems, took the couple by surprise shortly after 6 this morning. Police say the victims told them they saw a car with two people pull up. They say one of them got out with a gun and threatened to kill them if they didn't hand over their valuables. And police say at some point after that is when he shot them both. The man and woman both were taken to a hospital by ambulance. Police told us their wounds were not life-threatening. I was supposed to be here actually an hour ago, and, you know, I don't know if that was like a sign or something, not to come here an hour ago. Luck may have saved Hernandez from harm, but he worries that he could become a victim in the future. He plans to keep a careful watch on his surroundings, even as he races past it all. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man in handcuffs after police say he sexually assaulted a teenage relative for a year. Officers say 23-year-old Gerardo Alexis de la Campa was arrested Sunday on a charge of sexual assault of a child. According to arrest paperwork, the victim told police they had engaged in sexual intercourse on, quote, multiple occasions, end quote. Police tell us the girl, who is now 15 years old, is about 10 weeks pregnant. De la Campa's bond has been set at $40,000. More than 36,000 people have now tested positive for COVID-19 in Bear County. That means 393 additional cases have just been added. One more person has died, bringing the death toll to 323. There's one bright spot in this latest report. There's now been seven consecutive days where there's been a decline in hospitalizations. Right now, 1,044 patients are in the hospital with COVID-19 here in this local area. 418 are in the ICU and 287 are on ventilators. An estimated 21,505 people have recovered. Meanwhile, the state of Texas continuing to deal with the rising cases of coronavirus. The total number of cases in the state has reached 381,656. That is an increase of more than 5,800 since Saturday. The current death toll in Texas sits at 5,038. Be careful. That is a message from the Texas Attorney General and several U.S. attorneys' offices. They're warning scammers may be trying to take advantage of an increased need for person protection equipment, including masks. They want people to be cautious when dealing with new suppliers or vendors, especially when using a third-party broker. The warning states scammers may try to sell you equipment they don't actually have. Here are some of the red flags that a seller may be trying to scam you. Unusual payment terms, unexplained source of a large quantity of material, evidence of repackaging or mislabeling. Texans who believe they have encountered scams or price gouging should call the Office of the Attorney General toll-free complaint line at 800-621-0508 or file a complaint online. Earlier this month, KSAT shared info about a scheme that was derailed before local hospitals were sent bad masks. Courtney Freeman spoke with the head of the Texas Department of Emergency Management about a robust team right here in San Antonio filtering out that bad equipment. You can read both stories right now on KSAT.com. Promising new developments for the COVID-19 vaccine, the rush to get it. Biotech company Moderna has now moved into the next phase of testing with tens of thousands of Americans expected to volunteer. As COVID-19 continues to rage in huge swaths across the country with more than a thousand Americans dying every day for nearly a week, ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from New York. 
Today in an ABC News exclusive, the chairman of Moderna offering new insight into a potential vaccine as the company's phase three trials get underway in locations across 30 states and Washington, D.C. We have a certain number of cases that we need to see in the trial before we can demonstrate whether the vaccine arm gives us a more more protection than folks who are not on the vaccine arm of the trial. So we're talking next year at the earliest? We're talking late this year, next year, before the FDA can make this adjudication. 30,000 Americans are expected to volunteer for the Moderna vaccine clinical trials, hoping to help find a solution to a growing global catastrophe. I think it's very important that a person steps up and tries to do something good for the world at this point. The virus now infecting more than 16 million people worldwide, including the president's national security advisor, Robert O'Brien. O'Brien is the closest administration official to the president to test positive so far and just returned from Europe, having met with top officials from multiple countries. The White House says he's been self-isolating with mild symptoms and there is no risk of exposure to the president or vice president. That as the United States sees more than a thousand COVID deaths a day for five consecutive days. FEMA has now sent a letter asking medical professionals to help five hard hit states. Arizona, Louisiana, Texas, California, and Florida, which now has the second most cases in the country. And as the current coronavirus relief bill is set to expire, Republicans are wrapping up their proposal for the next bill, which would cut weekly unemployment benefits from $600 down to $200, or about 70% of previous wages, though Democrats say this proposal is dead on arrival. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. We do have some encouraging news and innovation by a team of scientists at the University of Texas in Austin could speed up the production of a coronavirus vaccine. The researchers were able to redesign a key protein from COVID-19. According to UT, most of the vaccines being developed right now work by training the immune system to recognize this key protein in order to find and fight the virus. What scientists at UT have done is make it so that the protein can be recognized more easily and more quickly. Researchers at UT say this improved version of the protein could reduce the size of each dose or speed up vaccine production. During this pandemic, nurses and medical professionals are seemingly more important now than ever before. Thanks to a $75,000 grant from Baptist Health Foundation, the Hallmark University nursing program is able to teach and prepare more future nurses. And as Max Massey shows us, this grant means so much more than just dollars and cents. Hi, Mr. Jefferson. How are you today? Brittany Whitaker is a third year nursing student here at Hallmark University. I do want to make the world a better place. So I'm going to check on your IV and check on your trach today. She's also a Marine Corps veteran and a single mother. Brittany feels a unique responsibility to make our community a better place. And after seeing conditions during this pandemic, she's only more motivated to help out. As we did our clinicals, I kind of felt more a need to. I felt like these patients need nurses now more than ever. So I became even more determined to finish and finish strong. What Brittany saw in the hospital rooms and what she didn't see, that's a real need here in Bear County. It's very, very important for us to have a quality, uh, efficient nurses to take care of our sick one. If we have readily supply of nurses, I am sure this pandemic will not be as devastated as it is now. Dr. O tells me right now we're dealing with a nursing shortage around the country and around our community. That means less medical professionals bedside and less people on the front lines of this pandemic. Right now, at any time in Texas, there are about 17,000 nursing positions that cannot be filled. 17,000 empty positions. Even in a year where we are not facing a pandemic, that is a clear cut need for help. And the lack of nurses and resources is a big problem. Patients aren't necessarily getting the care they could because of the shortage of nurses. The hope is that this grant can help nursing students, students like Brittany, who want to make the world a safer place. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Major League Baseball taking a huge coronavirus hit, costing a couple of games. We've got those details coming up. And civil rights legend and Congressman John Lewis set to lie in state later on this afternoon. After the break, we're going to take a look at the memorials from this past weekend of Lewis's life.
We are on standby to join ABC News in a few minutes for a special report honoring John Lewis, the civil rights legend and congressman who died at the age of 80. Six days of memorial events in Alabama, Georgia, and today in the nation's capital where he served at the House of Representatives for more than 30 years. ABC's Rena Roy has more from Washington. The man called the conscience of the Congress returning to Washington, D.C. today. John Lewis, who represented Georgia in the House for more than three decades, celebrated by his colleagues and country with an honor reserved for America's most prominent leaders. He will lie in state at the Capitol Rotunda. Today's tribute follows a weekend of memorials for the civil rights icon in his home state of Alabama, a service celebrating the boy from Troy, a name given to Lewis by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Among the speakers, King's daughter, Dr. Bernice King. And one day there will be a great camp meeting where we will all join together and say free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are all free at last. Earlier Sunday, Lewis's flag-draped casket carried by a horse-drawn carriage across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. Red rose petals lining the street where a 25-year-old Lewis led a march for the right to vote on March 7, 1965, a date that later became known as Bloody Sunday after state troopers attacked him and other civil rights demonstrators as they peacefully walked across that bridge. He's labored. He's done his work. He's done his job, like so many of us. Now it's time for us to do ours. Lewis returned to the bridge year after year, bringing bipartisan delegations with him. And on the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday in 2015, Lewis walked across the bridge with President Obama, who credited Lewis with helping to make his election possible. Lewis wasn't just a powerful advocate for African American rights, he also stood up for the rights of LGBTQ Americans, the parents and children of immigrants held in camps while seeking asylum, and for the many victims of gun violence in America. He was America, widely respected our... because of his consistent demands for equality. Former Vice President Biden and Vice President Pence are expected to pay their respects as Lewis lies in state. But because of the pandemic, his family is encouraging others to watch online so they can participate at home. Rena Roy, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, fresh off his wind-blown, rain-soaked trip to the Gulf Coast. <laughs> Justin Horn is back. Yeah, it's a lot drier here, uh, a lot quieter too. Uh, we're seeing some quiet conditions today. A couple showers trying to pop up there on radar. We may see a little bit of action this afternoon. The aquifer is up. This is great news. Up uh, half a foot to 656.6. In your pollen count, mold still elevated. It's down a little bit today from where it was yesterday. It's at 1300 in the high category. Rain chance is still there. Next couple days, we'll take a look when we come back. Like he dried out pretty good, doesn't he? You know, Justin's gotten to be kind of an expert at covering hurricanes. <laughs> Come here, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's good. good. Busy last three years, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the storm was was fairly strong. It did more damage than I think we thought it would. The storm surge was impressive with with Hannah. A lot of heavy rain, obviously, down across deep South Texas. So let's take a look at the numbers here. San Antonio. Yeah, we only got about a tenth of an inch. That's at the airport. Now, some places around Bear County did a little bit better, and certainly as you get out towards Forestville, Lavernia. Those areas did pick up some more rain. The huge totals were down there in the valley. Submission, nearly 10 inches. The biggest one I saw was Sullivan City, which is right there on the Rio Grande. 14.35 inches. Brownsville, 6.73. Corpus, nearly 4 inches. So this was definitely a rainmaker. And there's still flooding down there. It's going to be several days before those flood waters subside. So if you have family down in the valley, you know what they're dealing with, uh, with these heavy rains. And it does flood down there, but this was a pretty... Uh, impressive event that unfolded with Hannah as it sort of went southwest right into the valley. Uh, we could have used some more rain here. Again, we didn't get as much as we liked. And uh, you see the visible satellite and uh, radar right now. It is starting to dry out down there. So great news for those folks uh, down in the valley. For us, we are starting to see a couple showers develop. And we'll show you the radar here in just a second. But I want to show you the big picture. 
We've still got some tropical moisture down here across deep south Texas. Area of low pressure over Louisiana. That's producing some rain there around New Orleans. And then you got some active weather up there across parts of Oklahoma. Here's a look at our radar. And yes, there are some spots where we're starting to see some showers and storms pop up around Beeville. And then uh, we've got another little area around Pearsall. Uh, even up towards the valley, these small, quick moving showers. And we could see a few of those here around San Antonio this afternoon. We've seen that last couple days. And if you're lucky enough to get underneath one of those showers, they can put down some pretty decent rain. Here's a look at the future cast. And it does indicate uh, some more activity through 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, once we lose the daytime heating tonight, most everything goes away. And then tomorrow we put it on repeat. Very similar. Uh, although this shows a little bit less coverage tomorrow afternoon as far as showers and storms are concerned. Outside right now, mostly cloudy skies, 88 degrees, dew point is at 73, and we've got calm winds, but it feels like 96 out there. Humidity is very thick. We're losing some of those clouds, and we should get uh, partly cloudy skies this afternoon. Uh, temperatures now up to 90 at Randolph, 90 in Pleasanton, 89 in Seguin. Feels warmer than that, obviously, there. 90 in Del Rio, 90 right now in Catua. We're thinking 95 here in San Antonio feels like 100 this afternoon. It'll feel like 102 in Gonzales where the humidity will be very, very thick. Uh, meantime, we got to talk about more tropical weather out in the Pacific. We've got Hurricane Douglas here, which just skirted by the Hawaiian Islands. They just missed out on getting some big time winds there. That's good news, and that uh, storm will continue to weaken. Meantime, we showed you what's left of Hannah. It basically is just a remnant low at this point. Still some clouds and rain over Mexico. And then we've got a new system out here brewing in the Atlantic. This one has promise. Hurricane Center is uh, flagged this storm. Uh, it has a high probability of developing. And uh, it looks like right now this will move uh, towards the islands and then maybe turn north, uh, potentially down the line towards the east coast of the United States. But it's just too early to tell yet. Yeah, we don't even have a tropical depression, but this is the general idea. We've got some time to watch it as it uh, continues to develop out there in the Atlantic. Uh, forecast for us, 91 by 2 o'clock, 92, 6 o'clock. We'll be up around 95 for a high today. 20% chance of rain, partly cloudy skies. And uh, forecast for uh, tomorrow, 95, 20% chance of rain. 93 on Wednesday, 30% chance of rain. Up the rain chances just a little bit on Wednesday as a little disturbance uh, gets close to us. Otherwise, drier Thursday and Friday, and then we'll watch Saturday and Sunday. There is some promise there that maybe a weak frontal battery could get close to us. It's not going to cool us off, obviously. Temperatures go up, but maybe enough there to give us some showers and storms. Fingers crossed, guys. Thank you, Justin. Still coming up, the Spurs are having their same old problems. Looks kind of familiar. And we've got some details on why two Major League Baseball games have been postponed.